So moving from plain weaves to basket weaves, such as a balanced basket weave. So a balanced basket weave is the simplest variation on plain weaves in which several yarns in each direction are grouped together and woven. So two over two, three over three, four over four are examples of balanced weaves. So in, in this example on the left, you have two over two. And in this example, you have one, looks like you have four over four in that example. So clustered together, and when it's balanced, those variations are the same. Swatch 47 is uh, an example of a balanced basket weave. So swatch number 46 um, is an example of what's called a basket weave called a monk's cloth. And traditionally, monk's cloths were made of cotton. It's lightweight, it has an open weave, and it was originally used to make monks' robes. This fabric is a good choice for lightweight curtains, accessories, or pillows. So I'm a little disappointed that in our textbook they gave us an example of a polyester monks' cloth, because really part of that was that it was cool and lightweight and you know used for the monks' role. But you're looking at the, 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 this basket weave. This is an open basket weave so that you see those kind of squares that are left. And it is made of polyester. So this we don't have a sample of this in your textbook, but I just wanted you to look at a couple more uh, basket weaves. Um, a hop sack, either a two to one or two to two basket weaves used for curtains or furniture. Um, covers because of wrinkle resistance. So there's what a hop sack looks like. It's called hop sacking because the originals were used as sacking for dried hops or I'm guessing beer. Is that what hops are for? My husband chimes in. <laughs> um, Panama cloth. So you'll see this this pattern, this basket weave pattern, um, and it's often called Panama cloth for basket weaving and for if you go to West Elm or Pottery Barn and look at some of those jute or sisal rugs, you'll see that Panama cloth pattern. This is from West Elm. This is a basket weave headboard. You can see large clusters of yarns, several, you know, maybe 20 or 30 going across. Um, are clustered together to create that basket weave pattern. Probably cotton percale plain weave sheets with a print below. So beginning on swatch 48, uh, those are examples of what's called rib weaves. And so rib weaves, when you rub your hand across the surface of it, Probably the easiest one is to touch swatch 50, 51, swatch 51. You can feel that ribbing effect, those horizontal ribbed effects. And so this is gonna be achieved in different ways. It's gonna be achieved by using very thick yarns in the weft direction but sometimes it's actually a curve by jamming, jamming in extra yarns inside and in between these different rows. So it's actually, it's woven and then more filler yarns are, are kind of jammed in there to create this real ribbed effect. And so this is going to be different than a corduroy. So it might feel like a corduroy a corduroy is next week. Cordu corduroy has a raised surface and then the ribs are cut out. This is, this is created during the weaving process. So I'm gonna tell you that as an interior designer, I haven't used examples of taffeta or um, crepe de chine, I haven't used those as much as an interior designers because I work, I work here in Phoenix, Arizona, 
And do you see how it's a kind of a very formal looking weave, right? Whether it's made from rayon on polyester in number 49 or from acetate in 48, it, it has a more traditional fussy look to it. So I don't, I haven't used those, um, but should you work on the East Coast or should you do a lot of maybe special events and parties, a lot of party decor might be a taffeta or a crepe. So if you are to use those, you would use them for window treatments, accessories. I don't know, Betty. <laughs> Betty, maybe a novelty pillow. <laughs> I just don't know. Um, typically, you know, typically our clients don't want to sleep on synthetic materials. So maybe number 49 that has a little rayon next to it might feel a little better against the skin. Looking at swatch number 50 and swatch um, 51 is our um, rib weave. Um, and so you should be able to to put your your hands across it and especially number one and feel that rib. So for swatch number 50, this is called a broad cloth. So it is a little stiff. It is affordable and oftentimes this is used for drapery lining. So I've mentioned throughout the class and and as we get move further on that you know certain fibers need to be lined so this is what you might use for drapery lining a broadcloth and if you run your fingers down it you can feel a little bit of that ribbed effect a little bit of that texture and then in number 51 you can really see that pronounced rib effect in this rep weave and so this is very durable for upholstery, accent pillows, cornices, things like that. Um, I probably wouldn't use this for drapery, although the textbook is saying it's okay. So you would probably have to actually sew in the pleats. It wouldn't have a natural drape. So the, the a Bengaline and an Ottoman fabric, I do use these uh, as an interior designer. When I do want to use a fabric for draperies, windows, pillows, and accessories that have this type of luster, I typically gravitate to, to something that has a little bit of that rib or texture. I just think it adds interest. So you'll, you'll hear me talking a lot about texture and visual appearance um, throughout the classes that you take with me because it adds interest to interior design. Flat, straight fabrics, like a basic canvas, a whole room full of that is just very boring and, you know, it's not professional. So when we mix up these different textures, we get different effects. So I would use this for window coverings. I like that if I'm trying to go a little more formal. As would I the, I would use the cotton spun weave um, in sample number 53 as well, called the ottoman. So an ottoman is a larger horizontal rib, so you should be able to clearly feel that rib. The fabric could have various sized ribs or constructed as an occasional rib, depending on the effect that the manufacturer is trying to achieve. This one has like ribs in this example. An occasional one has spacing between the ribs. So in some other examples, right, you've seen some spacing in some of those ribs. So it can go all the way across, or it can have some different sizes and different spacing to create that effect. Here you can clearly see those fill yarns that were pressed through to pronounce and exaggerate the rib. You can see it right here on the side. 